Maple Leafs have been down 3-1 to the Bruins before a couple of times, 2013, 2018, and now this 2024 postseason. Remember, the first two instances, Toronto did force that game seven before ultimately losing the final contest. If you're a Bruins fan, there is a silver lining. You get another game from this guy. What about it? The playoff edition. McAvoy is seeking explanation from Steve Kazari, and Kazari is the first official to exit the ice. Coward! What about it? The playoff edition. I'm going to miss that guy. He's calling him out. He's calling out the referees. <laughs> it's me, Jay Onright. I'm going over to the Jay Onright Lounge. Frankie Corrado's here, and Brian Hayes is here as well, making his first ever in-studio appearance. Brian, it's great to see you, and you're wearing pants. Yes, I am wearing pants, which is a rarity. <laughs> Usually when I'm on with you, I'm not wearing pants. Uh, how about our boy Jack Edwards? Oh, man. Like, I mean, why was that cowardly that... Because Charlie deserved an explanation. He deserved an explanation. Yeah, that okay. was, uh, well, it's that's either, Jack's mindset. It's either an explanation or you're a coward. <laughs> that's There's right. no middle ground There's zero middle with Jack There's Edwards. never any middle ground with okay. Jack. Uh, I am going to miss him, uh, and I'm going to miss that segment. But, hey, uh, the Leafs get the victory. Everyone had counted them out. Austin Matthews didn't even play in the game, and yet they win it. Are you surprised they actually pulled it off, Brian? I'm not surprised because of the history of these two teams, right? You just referenced it, Jay. Back in 2013, they were in the same situation. The Leafs were down 3-1. Everyone was doubting them at that point. They win game five. They push it to a game seven. Same thing in 2018, right? There's a lot of revisionist history right now. Oh, I was a believer back in 13 and 18. <laughs> no, you weren't. You didn't believe back then. Uh, and there wasn't a lot of belief going into this game tonight. So I'm not surprised based on the history. I am surprised based on the fact that the recipe really didn't change. The Leafs still couldn't score goals. They scored two goals tonight, one of them in regulation, and their power play, they go 0 for 3 on the power play. So all of the issues that were kind of plaguing this team coming in were still evident tonight, yet I give them all the credit in the world. They played great in the first period. They probably had a reason to feel down. It was 1-1, yet they dominated the first period, but they kept battling. Nyes was obviously great tonight. He was huge in overtime. Wall was great. So full credit to the Leafs. I'm, I'm surprised based on two things that have really skewed this series. The special teams battle has been a huge issue for them. Like their penalty kill hasn't been good. Power play, like you talked about, hasn't been good. But they haven't had a goaltender that has gone save for save with Swayman or Allmark in the game that he played. And tonight, Joseph Wall was able to do that. And the special teams wasn't the dictating factor in the game. They don't score a power play goal, but they don't give up a goal. And at five on five, it's not just in this game. There have been moments throughout this series where they have been just as good, if not better, than the Boston Bruins at 5-on-5, five five, but we forget about it because they let in a leaky goal or the power play scores for Boston. So tonight, those weren't factors in the game, and you get the result that you got. No surprise that Sheldon Keith goes with Joseph Wall. Uh, and you alluded to it, Brian. It's not like they scored a ton of goals to win this hockey game. Was Wall ultimately the reason they got the victory? Yeah, I, I think in large part. And I can't wait between now and Game 6 where they pretend like, it could be Samsonov, <laughs> right? There's, you can't. We're not going to give you an answer on who's going to play. I think we we all can concede. Marty Jones going. To, yeah. Maybe it's Marty hey, Jones. Marty Who knows? Jones. Anything's possible in the playoffs. But yeah, he was massive tonight. He yeah. went to to school in Boston, right? It's a big moment for him. Like he's a young guy. He was playing great this season prior to the ankle sprain, and ever since he came back, he struggled, including a couple of games against the Bruins late in the season where he struggled. He gave up goals. The team couldn't score for him. They didn't score for him much tonight. But he was outstanding, and specifically late into the third, into overtime, he made an unbelievable stop at the start of overtime to keep the game alive. And this is the nature of that position, right? It yeah. can ooze confidence for your whole team. It's the one position in the sport that can dictate what's going to happen in a game, what's going to happen in a series, what's going to happen in a season. It's a unique position. Joseph Wall was unbelievable tonight. And what a spot he's been put into now two seasons in a row. He has to go in last year, pressure situation this year. As much as people may have thought like the Leafs were down and out, that's a pressure situation mm -hmm. for a one of one. That's a goaltender. You're by yourself. You're isolated. So credit to him for playing well and making the saves that he had to make. But prior to him getting injured, it felt like when you watched him play, it was calm, it was composed, it was poised. It never felt like the game was out of hand for him. When he came back from injury, there was the leaky goal, and there was nothing that separated him and Samsonov. Like tonight, he showed 
that there is a separator between him and Samsonov, and now it's his net. And after the game, he said he, had, he was having fun out there. Yeah. And that's ultimately what it's all about, right? He, he didn't feel the pressure, and that was a huge part of what propelled him to victory. Now it's wild to think the Leafs have a chance to go home, figure out how to win this game on Thursday and force the game seven. What are you expecting from them on Thursday, Brian? And do you think Austin Matthews might actually draw into the line? It's tough to say with Matthews. Like, like obviously, something's really going on with mm -hmm. him right now. I, I think it's moved past illness in terms of why he's out of the lineup. The Leafs aren't going to give those details. They don't have to give those details. But that's going to be a big question mark leading up to game six. But tonight, they redeemed themselves. The Leafs redeemed themselves based on how they played game four. I was in the building. It was one of the flattest performances I can remember them playing in a long time. An incredibly disappointing effort for the Leafs in game four. And they redeemed themselves to an extent tonight, yet they're two and one in Boston in the series. This is where the challenge is, and this is where you really have a chance to redeem yourself if you're the Leafs. They've lost six consecutive games at home in the playoffs. Six consecutive. That's mm -hmm. an embarrassing stat. And they should be embarrassed by that, but they should be inspired by the idea that they have a chance to actually rectify that. And if you find a way to win on home ice, which should happen, and at some point, the levy's got to break for them. If that happens, all of the pressure leaks towards Boston. Boston's probably feeling some deja vu right now because Florida won in game five overtime last year. They had to go down to Florida thinking, here we go. Yep. It's going to continue. It has to continue in Toronto on Thursday night. It's a big opportunity for the Leafs. The fact that you had to say, if they find a way to win on home it's ice crazy. is completely bizarre. But it's bizarre it, what's happening It's here. bizarre because you can get the matchup you want. That hasn't helped them. Like for, They have to be disciplined, as disciplined as they were in this game, because like we talked about the special teams, but for the Leafs on home ice against the Boston Bruins, it's like you see the template, you see what the game plan is, and if the Leafs lost this game tonight, it was going to be such an opportunity wasted because at five on five, it's not like the Bruins were overwhelming. Mm -hmm. It's not like they run away with things. Like it really has been much closer than it may look at five on five. So it's a great opportunity for them, like you said, and it's home ice. Like this is where you need to assert yourself and show that you can play in the playoffs and win games. Well, and now it's also about a psychological mind game, I think, for the Leafs, where, as you know, Frankie, you know, Jay, if it's going to six, someone has to be down 3-2. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't matter how you got there. Doesn't matter yeah. how you played in game one, how you played in game four. Someone had to be down. Okay, it's the Leafs, but you were going to be in this position anyway. So yeah. they get a big opportunity on Thursday I, night. I don't buy into the fact that the Bruins are necessarily feeling the pressure now. Like, I think one game is, is not a big deal, but you win game six – now that that, that starts to creep big in, time. for sure. Because you know the way Boston and that market's going to react. You too. have to ask yourself this. Are the Boston Bruins going to blow a 3-1 series lead two, year, two years in a row? It's possible. Yeah. Like it, it can happen, but I don't think they'd be there yet. I think this is one of those ones for them where it's like, okay, we lost the game. Let's just go to Toronto very businesslike and, and finish the job. Guys, here's what we need between now and Thursday. Another tweet from our friend Joe Bowen. Let's see. Calling out the crowd. Getting them going. you got to get that crowd loud for Thursday night night guys great to have you on the show you want to check out some Isles Canes highlights of course. absolutely let's do it